And he said, you know what? I, I'm just going to go ahead and keep You Are Not Alone. Wow. Sony really likes that one. So mm -hmm. he kept that one and, and, and gave us Why. And then when we recorded it, it just felt right to keep his vocals on in the yeah. chorus. You know, yeah. he has a mag magical voice. And, and you know, we asked him, he said, of course, I'd love to. So he was on that song. And, and that's, that's a memory I'll always cherish. Oh, wow. You know? But that's, that's what our relationship was like. He was like this, the biggest brother, but the biggest supporter of all of us. And he instilled confidence in all of us. That is gorgeous. Thank you, TJ, for that exclusive memory. Yeah, I've never <laughs> shared that. Yeah. Yes, uh, thank you. That's um, in the way. The truck moved, and who was standing next to her? Your uncle Jermaine Jackson. Oh, really? Oh my God, TJ, I had a heart attack. Wow. I'm doing okay. Good. Um, Can you hear me good? good to see you, Anita. How you been? Good. Thank you so much, TJ, for doing this. I was you like, are welcome. the whole day I was like, I can't even like breathe. <laughs> oh, you're fine. You are fine. I was like, he has to do this. Like he said, yes. I like. I'm not doing anything for the whole day until I get him on the chat. <laughs> <laughs> well, I am here. I'm here. But you know what? Let me do this. I'm gonna put on some lights just so to brighten my visual a bit, and Perfect. then we'll get going. Okay. Perfect. Okay, hold on. <laughs> All right. All right. Um, Perfect. Thank you so much, TJ, for being a guest on my podcast today. You are welcome. So, real quick before we start, tell yeah. me about um, tell me about what you do and what this is. All right. So, I am a young journalist from London, and okay. I created a series called All or Nothing, and the goal was to interview influential, successful people in any field musicians, doctors, anything, who give their all or nothing to their job and kind of live their life like that. They always give 100%, never half ass anything, you know? And yeah, I like it. you belong to the blueprint of that meaning. <laughs> <laughs> cool, well, I, I, I'm, uh, I'm excited and I'm in. So you just, I'm ready whenever you want. And, and congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. So I just really wanted to tell you, first of all, how much you and your family really mean to me. Um, I'm a singer first myself. So anytime I'd write, perform, sing, I had a brief stint with Warner, but like Michael Jackson and the Jacksons, that was the only level I'd look to for guidance. Like you guys mm. are everything. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I appreciate that. And, and like you, you know, I grew up listening to my family and my uncle and my uncles and father and aunt and um, I was similar. I looked up to them and, and, you know, it's, it's really cool to hear others feel the same way. Always and forever. <laughs> That's cool. So, um, can you tell us a little bit about how it was growing up for you? And when did you realize that your family was music royalty and that your uncle was the Michael Jackson? Uh, growing up for me, I think was actually relatively normal. At least mm -hmm. I, I don't really know what to compare it to. Yeah. You know, for me, it felt normal. You know, I got to do a lot of the same things kids do, you know, playing sports and went to school and, um, you know, did the normal things. You know, I yeah. was into hide and seek and all those other games that kids are into, <laughs> video games. Um, and, and then, but, you know, the difference was, I think there were certain moments where we were privy to things that I think most people weren't, whether mm -hmm. it was concerts yep. or, you know, studio um you know everything usually had some type of music involvement yeah and i think that's what helped um you know create our love for music and and my mm -hmm. brothers and i we'd see we would see our father and uncles achieve amazing things mm. and that encouraged us to to want to be the same way yeah and um you know so from the beginning really i i, I can think about being at music videos you know from the smooth criminal video to even oh. before um, you know, my brothers and I are in the When I Think of You for my Aunt Janet. Wow. And we were, you know, it, it's interesting because for us, it was just family just working, doing mm -hmm. their thing. And, and I still feel that way. I still don't feel like we were at these legendary videos. I feel like we were at our aunt or uncle's <laughs> video, you know. And 
we just got to see and learn on on how it works and yeah. and still to this day i think we try to implement a lot of those lessons we learned mm-hmm. um and, and try to make great art for for people to enjoy and to escape with it's so beautiful so growing up obviously singing was the natural thing for you and your brothers Taj and Tarrell to fall into what made you guys decide to create free tea and who came up with the name so our mother used to we used to we used to when we were really young, we used to like take mops and brooms and act like they're microphone stands, you know, and we'd go to a, a big show of our families and then come back and want to be like them. They were like our superheroes. So yeah. we were, <laughs> we were trying to be like the Jacksons, you know, and um, as far as the name, our mother used to call us her three T's, you know, so if it was like dinner time or we were all in trouble, she'd say three T's, get down here, Aww. you know? um and um you know so we went with that as a band name for the beginning you know and since i was probably seven i was doing music with my brothers and we were known as the three t's and then i remember clearly it was at neverland my uncle michael said you should you guys should uh, maybe drop the apostrophe s and the the and ah. just go with three t and we were like three t huh and he's like yeah it's, it's stronger and it's more current and, and ah. modern it's got a ring and, to it. You know, it made complete sense. So I was probably 13 at that time and <laughs> 14. And from then on, we were 3T. Whoa, incredible. Can yeah. you tell me the story behind Why, the beautiful single with you and your Uncle Michael? And how did that record come about? And what was it like actually being in the studio with Michael and actually being on the video set with him? Yeah, so, okay. So for Why, we were actually... We were never in the recording studio with him for why, because the way we got why was we were in New York, I think at the Hit Factory, while my uncle was recording the History album. Mm -hmm. So we were with him, and then in like the guest room, we came in and had a little meeting, and and he played You Are Not Alone and Why for us. Wow. And he said, unfortunately, I have to let one go, but I was wondering if you guys wanted to use one for your album, because we were recording the Brotherhood album. (laughs) <laughs> and we were like yeah you know if it's good enough to you to sing to we're, we're gonna tr- right? we'd love to record it so when we heard him you know they both were amazing and he's like which one do you think would be best for me and we didn't know what to say because he sounded amazing on both <laughs> and he said you know what I, i'm just gonna go ahead and keep you are not alone wow Sony really likes that one so <laughs> he kept that one and and, and gave us why and then when we recorded it, it just felt right to keep his vocals on in the yeah. chorus. You know, yeah. he has a mag- magical voice. And, and you know, we asked him, he said, of course, I'd love to. So he was on that song. Um, and then the, for the video, it was amazing because we were preparing for this, you know, important, big budget video with our <laughs> Uncle Michael. And so we were, all, you know, really prepared. And and when we got to the set and he was there, it was like complete opposite of what we thought it would be. Cause he was so like, he was just so happy. And so um, like, I don't want to say unprofessional cause that's not <laughs> the word, but he was so loose and laid yeah. back. And he changed the whole vibe of what we thought the video would be. And I'm so happy to this day that that's how we did the video. Yeah. Cause those are like my, my best moments with my uncle being silly on tape. You know, I got that all the time behind the doors and in closed rooms, you know, yeah. I got that silliness, my brothers and I did, but we never got it on tape because we didn't film it, you know what I mean? But why like cap- captures that that okay. that essence of him and that joy. So it's to this day, it's, it's probably my favorite video to watch because of that, you know, yeah. and, it, and it, there, there wasn't, like I said, there's not much that I have that that captures our relationship and that video does it well. Wow, you can tell you're having so much fun when he like puts his leg over your leg and then yeah. he hugs. It's gorgeous. Yeah, it, you know, and and like I said, it, I couldn't prepare for that. I didn't expect that. That's all him catching us off guard. And <laughs> I think it's brilliant because you know his all of his other videos. He's such a perfectionist, and everything mm-hmm. has, you know, is structured and seems like it has a purpose. Yeah. And in this video, it's the one where he he's just going with the flow from the beginning to the end wow and, you know, and i think it's it captures him in a beautiful space it definitely does know? gorgeous in terms of music michael jackson is the greatest artist of all time absolutely incomparable and we'll like we'll never see that again in our lifetime um somebody with so much conviction songwriting prowess dancing ability showmanship we've never seen it all together in one 
watching Michael Jackson growing up and now still makes me believe in magic and that I can really do anything. Um, did Michael ever explain to you how he mastered music and how he actually became Michael Jackson? Like, what was he doing that nobody else was? You know, I, I, it's, it's hard because I think it's, it, it was just like the perfect storm for two different ways, you know, because mm. if you listen to his, you know, like there's acapella versions of some of the old Jackson 5 classic songs from like, I'll be there, I want you back. If you listen to those, acapella versions and to know a 10 11 year old is singing mm -hmm. that with the amount of conviction and passion and and pain in his voice it's mind-boggling and and i i haven't heard someone another 10 or 11 year old do that so it makes yeah, you wonder it's it's, it's got to be naturally born you yeah. know but at the same time um you know he was he was a hard worker there was no one more dedicated and serious to doing um, you know, to, to being the best he absolutely could be yeah. than my Uncle Michael. You yeah. know, he would rehearse and rehearse and study and study. And, and I think when you do that for a long, long period of time, like he was probably doing since he was 10, 11 years old, you become great at it. Yeah. You know, and I think he became great at it, you know, after a decade of doing so, he was still only 20, 21, wow. you know, and, and, and I think that's why Thriller and even off the wall, all those great albums were, were made at such a young age for him because he had already put in so much time and yeah. he had the natural talent and he had the drive. Wow. And that's a dangerous combination. If, if you have the natural talent, the drive, and you have youth, right? it's a dangerous combination. So. Yeah. He's like definitely in the class on his own. Yeah. I've always understood the importance of mentors and the influence in their lives. Um, you had the greatest mentor of all time being Michael. And I honestly would have given an arm to have a conversation, <laughs> literally like yeah. he's my hero. What were the greatest lessons that Michael taught you about believing in your own magic? Oh, so many, so many. There's, uh, there's so many lessons. I, I will forever be grateful for everything he did for me and mm -hmm. for everything he taught me and everything, you know, just, being there for me in my heart darkest times in my life mm -hmm. um, and just just being that that constant source of being there as far as um, I think it was magic is that what you said yeah Developing, how did he teach you how to believe in your magic I think he just said you have to be, believe in yourself Applehead you have to you have to do your thing you have to there's gonna be people you're gonna have people who don't like you you're gonna have people that are gonna be mean mm. you got to ignore that use that either find a way to to build on it or ignore it you know, and you, the sky's the limit. He, he always used to say, you could be anything you want to be. You mm -hmm. just got to put the work in and believe in it. Mm -hmm. And um, he, he always said that to us, even from when we were little boys, you know, and, and he would say, believe in yourself. Uh, you know, if you think, can you do it? And he said, I think it can. And, or if we said, I don't know. He said, no, I don't want to hear that. I don't want, you know, he would, he would do those kind of things. So from a young age, he, he instilled some type of optimism mystic characteristics in us yep. that that looking back I'm super grateful for yes. you know because I think a lot of people struggle with that self-doubt and and you know I'm not saying I'm perfectly always confident in mm -hmm. everything I'm doing but I understand I think what it takes to become confident yeah because yeah. of him indeed yeah. um as an uncle with Michael like do you have any memories of any like fun times that you can tell me of or any like what was his favorite food or something like that <laughs> You know, he liked um, like hot sauce. So he liked like tobacco sauce. So he'd put that in like popcorn and pretty much anything. Wow. Um, but I think one of my favorite moments, and I don't think I've ever told this story and I just thought of it. I remember we are at the ranch and we were playing like a trivia game. And uh, he would give us five questions or so, around five questions. And each question would be worth $100. What? So, yeah, so he'd have my brothers and I and he'd ask simple questions and if we got it right, we'd get $100, right? So one of the questions was, what state is the Grand Canyon in? And I was probably like nine or 10 years old. Mm -hmm. And I knew this answer. And I, it was probably because we just learned it in school. So I knew it. And it was like the first one I knew right off the bat. And my brothers were struggling. Like they knew it had, to, you know, it was a couple. It could have been Arizona. It could have been Nevada. It could have been New Mexico. Right. So they, they put the wrong, I think one put Colorado and one put Nevada and I had put Arizona. And when I heard their answers, that was like the best day of my life because <laughs> not only did I upend my brothers, 
but I want a hundred dollars. And, yes. and my uncle Michael was perfect because he was just laughing and <laughs> see, don't bet on the, you know, don't, he knows his stuff, you know, and, and that's, that's a memory I'll always cherish. Oh, wow. You know? But that's, that's what our relationship was like. He was like this, the biggest brother, but the biggest supporter of all of us and he instilled confidence in all of us. That is gorgeous. Thank you, TJ, for that exclusive memory. Yeah, I've never <laughs> shared that. Yeah. Yes, uh, thank you. Um, <laughs> your Auntie Janet is another one of my heroes. I adore her music, the fierce dancing. I Get So Lonely is like my favorite video of all time. And yes. her ability to have carved out her own powerful lane by herself. What is Janet like as an auntie? And what are some of the important lessons that she's taught you throughout your life? I think she... Um... Well, I'll say this. I, I remember when my, my mother first passed, we spent several days with my aunt and she was, you know, we were at her beach house and it was an important time because it, it allowed us to decompress and allowed us to, I really believe when someone deals with a, a serious loss, you know, I lost my mother at 16. Mm -hmm. um, I believe in the power of nature. That's one of the things I really believe in. And, and I, I don't know if it was on purpose or if she knew that, but we were at her beach house for several days and, and just hearing the ocean. And I think that was a huge time for me to, yeah. to recover, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and, you know, I think she's similar. She's always, especially as an artist, she's always been very serious about her, her profession and her craft, yeah. you know, from, from, you know, she, she's her, got a little iconic career herself with the, right? with the dancing and the, and the style. And, and that's something that she always, you know, was, you could same thing you could do it believe in yourself and never be you never count yourself out and and stay strong indeed thank you tj so um i read online currently do you have custody of michael's children i i was a guardian so yeah. they're now all adults so now they are all uh on well technically <laughs> i guess legally they're all on their own yeah um but i'm still there for them and i still help out however i can Cool. As I told them their whole life is I'm their cousin. Yep. And um, once I became guardian, I told them I'm still their cousin first so and will always be their cousin. And yeah. I don't care if they're 40, 50 years old, they can call me with any issue and I'm going to do my best to help them. Of course. And to me, that's the most important thing I could do for them is, is yeah. not necessarily the title, but just be there for them. And because yeah. life's hard, you know, and, and sometimes it may be when they're 25, 30, 35, where they, they really feel um, lost or, or have to deal with a serious issue. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm hoping they will reach out because that's, that's to me, the most important thing. Yeah. I was going to ask, how are they? Do they have any like interests of their own? Are they into music? Yeah, they're doing well. Um, Paris is the one who's mostly into music and, yeah. and Prince and, and BG are into film. But um, they're doing well, you know. Um, Prince graduated from school, yeah. um, college, university last year. BG's about to go um, to school, to university. He's graduating from high school this year. Um, so they're, they're doing well. They're, they're, they're living their lives and, yeah. and, 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 you know, growing every day like every other youngster out there. That is so beautiful that you're always there for them. It's a gorgeous bond. Um, mm -hmm. I wanted to ask, you're also really close with the Kardashians. And mm -hmm. I remember that episode of the softball charity game. Was you, mm -hmm. you was in that, right? It yes. was so funny. How was it going to prom with Kim Kardashian? Did you know you always wanted to take her at the time? Uh, well, you, you got to remember back, see, because Kim was, we dated when I was, I think, 16 and she was 14. We dated for almost two, well, we did date for two years. Mm -hmm. um, so right when I was becoming a senior, you know, she was my girlfriend. So she went to my prom and even with her prom, I went to her prom mm -hmm. as her date. So we went to each other's proms, but the whole family, you know, I, I had a nice text exchange with Chris um, just for Mother's Day. And I, I told her that I will never, um, I will never forget, and, and I'll always respect and appreciate what she did for me during that time. Like I said, I lost my mother at 16, mm -hmm. but Chris and the family, um, but in particular Chris, was was there for me like a mother, and she she helped bring me joy and happiness. It was actually the first time I celebrated Christmas was with them. Wow! And, um, it was a magical and important time for me, you know, to be happy and. And um, I, I, I remind her of that all the time, that that, that, that made a lot to me. And, yeah. and I'll always appreciate and love her. That's gorgeous, TJ. Um, you've got a new single out called Obsession. 
which yes. is a fantastic record. I've been dancing to it all day. <laughs> cool. Can you tell us a little bit behind the inspiration to that and how it was born? Yeah, um, that one's a tougher one to remember because I, first of all, we did all my songs, well, not all of them, but the ones from this EP obsession were, are almost a couple years old. And I hate saying that because people don't like hearing things that are old. <laughs> But I've been working on them for a couple of years. Yeah. And I think we just went into the studio and, and just created, you know, and and I think oftentimes you gotta talk about what you're thinking. And yeah. and I remember, you know, wanting to write a song about being obsessed with someone, you know, and, and loving everything about them from their mm-hmm. walk to their smile. And I think one of the um the earlier the earlier lyrics were a bit different, you know, different, but um, the, the whole gist of the song is has always been the same, which is I love you and I'm obsessed with you. And I think it could be a beautiful thing. Yeah. Like I did with insomnia, I like to switch um, terms that sometimes sometimes can be a little negative. I like to make them always positive. Yeah. And, um, you know, obsession, although it could be a dark thing sometimes, I think it could be a beautiful thing. And, and that's what the song's about. Great records, that and insomnia. And the acoustic of obsession, beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. you can tell, like, you all have that thing in your voice that you just know you're a Jackson. <laughs> I hear that all the time, but I don't, I don't know how to explain that. I just yeah. am doing the best I can to, you know, to, to, for the record. I really yeah. mean that, you know, and, and people say you have that Jackson tone. I don't know what that means. I don't it's just know a if natural it's greatness. <laughs> as a unit, but I just sing. I just sing. That's gorgeous. I have a story to tell you of an incredible moment that I'm never going to get over in my life. <laughs> let's hear it. All right, let's hear it. Okay, so Wednesday, the 28th of June, 2017. I remember the date. I was working at my part-time job. Have you heard of Baker Street in London? Baker Street? Yeah, have you heard of Bond Street? I have. I've heard of both of those, I think. Okay, so Baker Street's like right next to Bond Street, but it's a little less like busy. So I used to work in a really expensive shop on a dead end street in Baker Street. So nobody would come in because the clothes were like 500 pounds. Okay. (laughs) So one day I was just like hanging up um, jumpers on the rack. Nobody was in the shop but me and my manager. And I was just like, yep, another five hours to go. And there was a lot of traffic on the back street. So I was looking out the window, hanging up the clothes. And I saw the most beautiful girl I've ever seen in my life. And I was like, she's gorgeous and she's dressed really well. And a massive truck was in the way. The truck moved. And who was standing next to her? Your uncle, Jermaine Jackson. Oh, really? Oh, my God. TJ, I had a heart attack. Wow. I ran out the shop and I was like, Jermaine, is that you? And he shook my hand. And I was like, I'm never washing my hand again. That is so cool. And, and, and now that you're mentioning my uncle Jermaine, I want to give him love, too, because he was another one that that has always encouraged us. Yeah. Um, you know, and 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 like I, I've said this story, but when my mother passed, he gave me the most important hug that I've ever received. And and um, it was the first time I felt like I'd be OK in life. You know, and so I say this and share this for anyone out there who knows someone that may be going through it. The power of a hug is an important thing. And I, and I learned that from my uncle Jermaine. That's everything to like really be embraced when you're going through a yeah. hard time. Yeah. I, and I didn't know that. I didn't know that at the time, but especially, you know, like I said, I just turned 16 and he was the first one cause he was the closest that lived to us. And he just gave me a hug and really didn't say much. I don't know if he said anything. I don't remember, but I remember that hug and, and it, it's a powerful gesture. That's beautiful, um, TJ. And I learned that from him. Indeed. Oh, before I go, the rest of the story was. Yeah. Yes, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. This was like the best day of my life. I have got to tell you the story. So after I met Jermaine, I was just like still in shell shocked. And then the next day I was working and then I saw him in like the laundromat next to my shop again. And I was like, this can't keep happening to me. Like, I love you, the Jacksons wow. so much. I've met you twice in two days. What's going on? And then he said to me, oh, we have a massive um, show in Greenwich. And I was like, huh? And he was like, the Jacksons are putting on a massive performance. You should come. And I was just like, okay. I typed in the tickets, blah, blah, blah. And then I was like, okay, they're like 200 pounds each. I can't afford this. So um, that day my supervisor was like visiting the store. So I couldn't run off when my shift finished at seven o'clock on the dot. And I was like, I really want to go home. I'm going to miss my train. Dead silence. Somebody opened the door. He said, excuse me, do you know where I can buy a scarf? 
I looked up and it was Jackie and Marlon Jackson, I believe. Wow. I was like, this can't keep happening to me today. Wow. And my manager was like, nope, sorry, we don't sell scarves here. I was like, do you know who that is? Do you know who that is? And I was just like, this is wow. incredible. And I won two front row tickets to the Jacksons concert. Wow, that's a great story. So that's something you will always remember. And that's, that's cool. Always. That's cool. Three Jacksons. I, I'm, that's one thing I, I, people always say, you know, are you happy with who you are? I will never change who I am yeah. um, because I get to hear these kind of cool stories, you know, and, and they bring a smile to my face because I think about my personal experiences with those members and, you know, I, I love them all and, and I'm so lucky and privileged to have them all as, as my family. Yes, it's gorgeous. Basically hailing from one of the most famous families in the universe having free tea, having your own beautiful family, and having a front row seat to the world's greatest Michael Jackson all of your life. What does it mean to you to truly give your all or nothing? Uh, I think, you know, I think you just got to go for things in life, you know, mm -hmm. and, and what I've learned is you just got to go, you know, you got to go for it. And even though your, your goal may be one thing, the yeah. journey can change that goal and can change what that goal means and looks like for you. Um, but I, I think the main thing is you got to go for it, you know, yeah. and you got to be willing to give everything you have into whatever you want to be. Yeah. And I think it's important that you do what you want to do and do what you love and not what others think you should do or what's yeah. in. Yeah. Um, and I think that's a very important thing. People say it all the time with my music that my music, you know, I, I should be doing more music that's for today. But for me, I'm doing the music that feels right. And that's, you know, more old school with some elements of today. Yeah. Um, and, and I just believe you got you to gotta go for who you are and, and find your own identity. Yep. And the only way you do that is going 100% in, in what you want to do and what you want to be. Completely agree. Thank you, yeah. TJ. You oh, wow. Welcome. That's the end of the interview. <laughs> Well, I want to thank you and, and encourage you and to continue on. And I'm happy with what you're doing. Thanks. And I'm wishing you the absolute best. Thank you so much. How have you been dealing with um, quarantine life? I've been okay. I've been, I've been, you know, reading a lot. I've been um, trying to organize a lot. I've been yeah. spending a lot of time with family. I saw uh, I, I've swimmed, swam, <laughs> swam, whatever the past tense is. I've done that more in the last you know month and a half two months than i have in like three years really? um combined so <laughs> I, i've just been trying to just enjoy life and, and keep things simple yeah um you know i think that's that's the best way you could you, you have to be you mm -hmm. know and and the one thing i i would like to say is for everyone anyone out there who's dealing with the virus or struggling my heart is with you mm -hmm. um and for those who haven't been really um affected by it directly to, to I hope you really took advantage of the time or take advantage of the time to build relationship with your loved ones. Yes, so important. Thank you so much, TJ, for your time today. You're welcome. Sending Anytime. Blessings and everything else. I wish you all the best, always. Thank you so much, Nia. Take care, okay? Bye-bye. Thank you so much, TJ. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>